Hello, Mrs. Fawns here. We're going to look at the dog didn't eat my homework. This is week two of our passage. So this is a new passage. Last week we had the best part. This week we're looking at the dog didn't eat my homework. So if you don't have this passage, that's okay. You can follow along and answer questions with me. If you do have the packet, then you can also follow along with me or you're welcome to read on your own if you don't want to read with me. I'm going to look at the questions first for Monday. And it's, I'm going to, let's see, a little zoom in here so we can see a little bit better. It is asking us to look at and make a prediction before we read. So before you read, make a prediction about the story based on the title. We'll come back and do that in just a second. Where does the story take place? So I'm definitely going to be looking for our setting, where our story is happening. Who is the main character in the story? And then determine the meaning of the word rifled in the story. Okay, so I've got several things I'm looking for, but first I'm going to go back to number one. And it's asking me to predict what I think the story is, is about based on the title. So the dog didn't eat my homework. This is making me, I've not read this yet, but it's making me think that maybe something happened to the homework. And either the dog's going to be blamed for it or maybe not. But I'm going to put down something... Happens to the homework. Okay, I'm going to be reading this whole passage. You're welcome, welcome again to do this on your own, or you can read along with me. I'm going to zoom in again. I also have a highlighter with me, and a, I've got a pen. You're welcome to use a pen or a pencil. And I'm going to highlight things that I think might be important based on what I'm looking for with my questions. The dog didn't eat my homework. It would not hurt, Cody thought, to take one last look at his report on Benjamin Franklin, which he was scheduled to present after lunch. He had worked hard all week on, weekend on those four pages and even practiced reading it aloud to his big sister, Karen. Searching through his notebook, he realized the red folder was gone. Cody rifled through his stack of books, trying to make no noise while Catherine was presenting her report on Thomas Edison. I'm going to highlight Cody rifled through his stack of books because I remember that rifled is one of our words that we're looking for also I'm thinking about where this is taking place because I know that he's got like a book report or a report he's looking for somebody maybe a classmate is Catherine who's presenting her report I'm thinking that maybe this is happening right now in a classroom I'm gonna put a question mark but it sounds like already I kind of know that I'm in a classroom. Also, I know that we're talking about Cody. So he's probably going to be my main character. Are you okay? Whispered his friend Chelsea, who sat in the desk opposite. I can't find my report. It was in my red folder. Have you seen it? Cody muttered back. Chelsea looked around and shook her head. Did you leave it at home or on the bus? Cody felt a lump in his throat build. He had taken the report out and looked at it on the bus, making sure he had it. Had he set it on the seat beside him? He'd had the seat all to himself. The only person near him had been the annoying new kid, what's-his-name. If Cody had left it on the bus, it was that kid's fault for distracting him. He'd offered Cody gum. He'd tried to show him a baseball card autographed by his favorite pitcher. He told Cody that he had a really great climbing tree in his backyard and invited him to come over sometime to check it out. He seemed desperate to be friends. He even trailed after Cody when the bus dropped them off at school, calling, Hey, Cody, wait up! Cody had pretended not to hear him and walked a little faster. What seems to be the problem, Cody? asked Mrs. Schmidt. We need to give Catherine our attention. Sorry, Mrs. Schmidt, Cody said. Chelsea shook her head at him. He was sure the folder had been in his backpack. It was the first long report he had ever had to write. Mrs. Schmidt required three sources, and he had been careful to cite them correctly. As quietly as he could, Cody delved into his backpack. It contained only a few pencils rattling in the bottom. What can I do? Cody asked his friends between presentations. I can't find my report. She'll think you didn't do it, Chelsea said, laying her own report about Frederick Douglass on her desk. But I did it. Really, Cody's friend Travis said with a grin, and it just vanished. That is so lame. Cody, Cody, 
came a loud whisper from across the room. It was What's-His-Name, pointing wildly up at Mrs. Schmidt, sitting at her desk. What is his, this kid's problem? Cody ignored him. You could say your dog ate it, Chelsea said. Mungo really does try to chew up your books. When Mrs. Schmidt called on him, Cody was unable to say anything, even a lie. He stood up and went to Mrs. Schmidt's desk, hoping he could whisper some excuse. Oh, and here is your report, Cody, said Mrs. Schmidt. Tristan Jenkins said he found it on the bus and turned it in to me. He said he tried to give it to you. Tristan Jenkins, Cody said, picking up his precious red folder. He turned and saw What's-His-Name smile and wave. Thank you, Tristan, he said aloud. You totally saved me. Cody would not be forgetting his new friend's name again anytime soon. Okay, so that's the end of our passage. I'm going to go back to my questions. I think it might have helped to take a few little notes. So as you read, if it's, it's important if you look at your questions ahead of time, you'll kind of know what your focus is when you're reading. Okay, so we answered the first one. And then the second one, where the second question, where does the story take place? Even though it does talk back and mention the bus, the setting of the story is taking place in a classroom. And I can we can be very specific and we can look back and find out the teacher's name, Mrs. Schmidt. It's kind of a weird spelling of a name. Mrs. Schmidt's classroom. I'm putting apostrophe S because the classroom belongs to her or is inhabited by her. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to pull this down. Sorry if you couldn't see that. So the story takes place in Mrs. Schmidt's classroom. Who is the main character in the story? Well, I know we were talking about a boy. Throughout the story, we know that his name is Cody. He is the main character. And then determine the meaning of the word rifled in the story. I know that we highlighted that sentence. Let's look back. Cody rifled through his stack of books. He was trying to be really quiet while Catherine was presenting. I know he was looking for that folder his, in, that had his report in it. So when he, if he's rifling through his stack of books, I'm going to say that he's looking through. So rifled means looking through. He was looking through his backpack. All right, those are, that completes Monday. Monday's questions for our The Dog Didn't Eat My Homework passage. Stay tuned for another recorded session. We'll look at Tuesday tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.